want to welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to our worship service here at St. Luke Lutheran Church, Ocean Isle Beach. I'm glad that you have joined us for worship today. Uh, this week is traditionally the week of Christian unity, um, so there will be a special prayer for unity during our prayer time, um, which seems especially important this year, uh, what's going on in our country, and it's also inauguration week, so time to to pray for uh, this country to be united and Christians to be united as well. It's also the day uh, on Monday we remember Martin Luther King Jr., who is also a unifier of, 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 of the nation during the 60s, so we'll remember him as well. Uh, a couple of announcements, things that we need to be aware of. The first, you already probably know that we are on a week-by-week -week basis of whether we are worshiping together or just online, so check your emails on Monday morning to see where we'll be next Sunday, uh, if we'll be here together um, or not. If we are together, if we are uh, gathering in person, uh, you'll also once again need to, to sign up. So the sign-up sheets will go out in the email and you need to sign up to attend uh, worship at 9.30 and worship at 11 o'clock. We will, if we are together, we will install our council members finally. And um, either way, we will be receiving new members. If we're just online, it'll be online. Uh, if, if we're together, it'll, it'll be in person, but we will be receiving uh, new members next Sunday into the congregation as well. And then just a note to council members to remember that the council meeting has been moved to January 26, January 26 at one o'clock. I think that's all the announcements I have. Let us begin our worship service. the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. And let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundance grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. 
Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, the most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And God speaks to us in scripture reading, preaching, and song. First reading is 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called him again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son lay down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Psalm is 139. We will read responsively. Lord, you have searched me out. O oh, Lord, you have known me. You, you know, know my, my sitting, sitting down, down and, and my, my rising up. up. You, you discern, discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh, Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your the eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to thee. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. 
The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, for which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who brings us grace and truth. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to them, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you o Christ. Christ. I do not have very good eyesight as I take my reading glasses off. <laughs> I've worn glasses since the third grade, and I can still remember getting my first pair of glasses and wearing them out of the eye doctor's office into the sunshine of a summer day, and I couldn't believe the leaves on the trees. I could see them so clearly. They no longer were just a kind of a mound of green on top of the trees, but they were leaves to see. There are all kinds of reasons why people cannot see clearly. Stigmatisms, macular degeneration, cataracts. But you know, it isn't just physical causes that blur our vision that prevent us from seeing things clearly, the truth about things and about people. I think about fans at a football game, and I will admit I am guilty of this as much as anybody, sitting 20 rows up in the stands and a good way from the field, and a penalty is called against our team the team we are rooting for, the team we are cheering on, the team that we want to win the game. And we start screaming at the ref who threw the flag. And we may say some not so nice things about that person, like he needs a pair of glasses. He is a yard from the foul, from the penalty. And we're 20 rows up in the stands and 100 yards away now, yes, his vision may have been obstructed and the wrong call made, but most of the time, those on the field 
with a clear view, get the call right. But it shows how our loyalty, how our bias, how our anger, how our prejudice can cause our vision to get blurred. I wasn't going to reference another movie. I feel I've done that past few sermons. But Pam and I recently rewatched the movie Hacksaw Ridge. And it's a true story of a man, uh, Desmond Dawes, who enlisted in the army and he wanted to serve his country during World War II. But his religious beliefs made him a conscientious objector. So he refused to carry a gun. So his fellow soldiers in his unit and his unit leaders, they saw him as a skinny, cowardly kid, kid who would put them all in danger. He became the medic of the unit and on Hacksaw Ridge, which is the battle, he put his life on the line again and again and again, and he saved the lives of 75 soldiers. After the battle, his captain came up to him and he said, I've never been so wrong about a person. When I first saw you, I, I just saw a skinny kid. What you did, you, you are the most courageous person that I've ever known. And I hope someday that you can forgive me. We see what we want to see. I think that's part of our nation's troubles right now. People see what they want to see, what they want to believe and they refuse to have their vision corrected. Our gospel story that I just read to you is about seeing. When Philip and then Nathaniel asked Jesus if he was the Messiah, his answer was an invitation to come and see. But it wasn't easy for them to see. To see Jesus as the Son of God, if you keep reading on in John's gospel and you get to the Last Supper, Jesus has just washed the disciples' feet. And Jesus says to them, if you know me, you will know my Father. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. To which Philip asks him, Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus says back to Philip, have you been with me so long and yet you do not know me? Philip had trouble seeing Jesus. I think we are all like those first disciples looking for Christ in our lives. And like those first disciples, it's difficult for us to know exactly what to look for when looking for God in our lives. But Jesus showed them Come and see, he said. And he shows us how God is at work in the world. Nathaniel, Philip, and Andrew, when they saw Jesus, they saw the Lord having compassion. He fed people who were hungry. And he saw other people who needed healing and healed them. And he saw children and the elderly and outsiders, and he welcomed them. And also looking for people to repent of their sins. And it's interesting that Jesus especially wanted people to repent of the sin of prejudging others and looking at others with disrespect. And they heard from Jesus stories about grace and concern for others, about a prodigal son that is welcomed home, a good Samaritan who helped the stranger. Come and see is our invitation. And when we follow Christ, we end up at the cross. And the cross corrects our vision of where to see God at work. The cross becomes the lens for us to see God more clearly. Through the cross, our vision of God is corrected because there we learn when we see selfless love, when hope is provided to people who are suffering, when joy wells up in life again after living through sorrow, 
When a relationship is repaired through repenting and forgiveness, we see Christ most clearly. I thought I would tell you of a couple of sightings of Christ at work. This story is about Stan, who heard in church about a Denver family facing a rather bleak Christmas holiday. Medical bills had robbed them of anything extra. So Stan's pastor asked for a volunteer to get a Christmas tree for the family, and Stan answered the call. So Stan and his son Jay headed up into the mountains in the family pickup truck to get the tree. But on the way, their truck skidded off the icy road and hit a boulder and that shattered the windshield of, of the truck. And Jay was showered by broken glass and went into shock. Stan was uninjured, though he was shaken up. Cars sped past them, 200 cars sped past them. And finally, one stopped to help. And the lady took Jay into the car, her car to comfort him while her husband helped Stan move his truck off the road. And then this kind couple drove Stan and Jay home and quietly left without identifying themselves. Stan was upset that he was unable to get this family the tree for the family his church was trying to help. But later in the month, the pastor asked if Stan might deliver a food basket to that same family. He found the house and he could hardly believe it when the door opened and standing there before him was the same couple who stopped to help him on that mountain road. Come and see, selfless love, bringing hope. That story also reminds us when you think you're the one helping only to realize you have been ministered to by those people and that Christ comes to those, Christ comes to us through those in need. The other story is about a couple. The husband is dying of cancer. He had been through two years of a slow descent of suffering and now is at the point of death and hospice has been, had been called in to keep him comfortable. Their pastor visited and the wife lifted up the cross of Christ in that room to him. She said this, that even though the past two years had given her little happiness, she said she was not bitter or angry at God. In fact, she said her faith in God was stronger than ever before for she had come to realize how fragile all of our lives really are. And she began hearing the story of Christ in a different way that it's the story of how God chose to be with us in such a fragile way. Coming as he did as a baby, as one of us, and so had to suffer in life and die like us. And she now sees God at work in weakness, in suffering, just like in Jesus' fragile life and his dying on the cross. And if God is there, God is everywhere for us. Every day we have that invitation that Philip received to come and see the Messiah. And the good news is the selfless love of God and hope and joy and forgiveness are never far from us. They are there when we least expect them and when we need them the most. Come and see. When a mother or father stays up all night tending to their sick child, there's God. Come and see. Come and see tomorrow when we take a moment to remember the work of Martin Luther King and we remember that the civil rights movement was in a way helping people see Jesus at work in this country, correcting the injustices of racism. Martin Luther King wrote back then, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can drive out hate. And he also said this, which I find interesting at this time. It's not the violence of the few that scares me, 
It's the silence of the many. And of course, right now, we, the work of Christ can be seen in every hospital across this country where ICU nurses are there with their dying patients, holding their cell phone in one hand so that their loved ones can talk to them, can see them, and holding the patient's hand in their other hand. Come and see. Look for selfless love, for hope abiding even in loss, a face filled with compassion. Look to those who are weak and in need of help, and you will see him, the one who fills all and all, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. Have mercy, Have mercy O God. God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray, have mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are in prison or homebound. We pray especially for Bud, Carolyn, and Emil, for Chuck, for Deborah, and Rocky, for Sandra, for Tim, Charlene, and Robin, for Alex, for Barbara, for Doris and Ed, for Grace, for Judy, and for the family of Bill Golder and the family of Don Snow. 
Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Let us pray. Have, have mercy, O God. We pray for Christian unity. Holy God, giver of peace, author of truth, we confess that we are divided and at odds with one another, that a bad spirit has risen among us and set us against your spirit of peace and love. Take from us the mistrust, the party spirit, the contentions, and all that divides us. Work in us a desire for reconciliation so that putting aside personal grievances, we may go about your business with a single mind devoted to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let us pray, have mercy, O God. And let us pray for the nation. Holy Trinity, one God, you show us the splendor of diversity and the beauty of unity in your own divine life. Make us who came from many nations with many languages a united people that delights in our many different gifts. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with authority the spirit of wisdom, that there might be justice and peace in our land. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love, through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. And now let us give thanks to God for his word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may Christ, born into time to bring endless peace, guide our days and years in righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And now go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Well, good morning again, and welcome to our chat time. I hope everybody is doing well. Hi, everybody. Pam says hello. I'm behind the ca camera, <laughs> although I was in front of it. Yeah, so that was a first. That so was Pam scary. Helped out in the in the service today, so that was nice. And I also uh, wanted to mention, I forgot in my announcements, that um, Bud provided our, our prelude music uh, from his home. So we were glad about that and he was willing and able and he wants to help in any way he can. Um, so he's, he's back on it. So that's feeling, great. Feeling better. And we talked to uh, the Ganams this week as well and they're, they're doing, they're doing, they're, they're, they're doing uh, good. Doing good. So yeah, so, that's, so we're thankful for that. Yes. Uh, we're also thankful for, I guess I'll start here, the, well, let me first say about last week's chat, I'm not sure what happened. It played okay on my computer uh, when I downloaded it onto my computer to get it onto the stick, although I didn't play it once it was on my, this, the stick that I gave to Lori. So but she said it played fine. Think, yeah. So anyway, and she tried to get it to upload correctly onto YouTube and it just wouldn't do it. So you saw me in slow-mo and apparently <laughs> a lot of people got a good laugh with that. It looked like they said I was underwater. Um, and then I thought, well, you know, after the week we had last week, um, maybe that was meant to be that to, to give, give you something to smile and, and laugh about. Because uh, we haven't had a whole lot of things to laugh about lately. So Although we didn't watch it. No, so people Maybe I need to go week, back and you, watch it. Did you watch it? Said, well, Lori took it down, I think. It's not, it's not available oh, to okay. watch. <laughs> so, thankfully. Um, so, that's that. Uh, the other thing uh, that we're thankful for is the vaccinations. The COVID vac vaccine is here. And I talked to some members who already either got vaccinated <clears throat> or are scheduled to be vaccinated. So, that's wonderful. That's really good news. And in fact, I, I looked at uh, the website, and so we are now in, Brunswick County is now in group two, which includes anyone 65 years or older, regardless of health status or living situation. You can sign up to be vaccinated and get vaccinated. Now it doesn't say here, which I heard on the national news, that this group includes people with not only 65 and over, but also people with a pre underlying, conditions. underlying condition. Now, it doesn't say that in the county's information, so I think that's And not I'm not sure they have enough that, so. vaccines so, right now. Well, yeah, you, you have to get, it's, it's by, yeah, availability. Um, and then it but tells sign you, up so that when we do get more. Yeah, it tells you to go to my chart account at www.novantmychart.org. And Pam had a good idea so that, so if you're having trouble and I talked to one member who was having trouble even just to sign up for a vaccine, um, if you're running into difficulties, give me a call or give the church a call and maybe we, maybe can, we can help help you get through that process. I'm not an expert so, on computers, but no, I know how to zoom. <laughs> So seriously, um, you know, call for help. If, if you're having trouble si signing up to get vaccinated, call for help. And we'll, and we'll get somebody we can, that can help you or, get somebody to help. or I can try to do it too. Right. Um, okay, so that's that. So in my sermon today, I talked about seeing Christ in our lives and the different ways that we can see Christ at work. And... This morning, what I didn't say in that sermon, and what happened to me this morning made me realize, is uh, noticing when the devil is at work in your life. Because <laughs> I got up to print out my sermon at home, and our printer, it, it said that it was low in ink, so I changed the, the ink. Just black ink. Black ink. And then it didn't even recognize that it had black ink or something. I don't know. You well, you put a whole new... Yeah, put a new cartridge in. Cartridge in, and it still said we had no ink. So I couldn't get it to print. And then Pam realized, well, we can print it out in color. So we did. We printed, so we changed it to so blue. So I got a blue version of my sermon. <laughs> and then I came to church to print it out in black, and I couldn't get the printer here to work. It finally did, though. And then we get over into the church... And since Pam was reading the, the scripture passages, we wanted to do that from the lectern, and we couldn't get the lectern mic to work. to work. 
it wasn't muted. I know how to the, use the iPad and the sound system was on. My white, my mic worked, the mic at the altar or at the pulpit worked. And so could there's a lot we don't know how to do. The devil was in the, <laughs> the details this morning trying to get the, the worship service together. Uh, so finally it, I called Lori and she said, well, just why not use, if the, if the pulpit mic is working, just use that and that's what we did. So that's, that's why Pam was in the pulpit, not the lector. Anyway, so yeah, so the devil's at work as well <laughs> in life. Uh, the other thing I wanted to, to talk to you about was something that I talked to you last week about, but since I was in slow motion, you didn't hear it. And that concerns the scam that happened. <clears throat> um, and we put in the bulletin, I wanted to bring that part, uh, of, of what you need to know about that. And, and basically, from my perspective, you will never get a message from me asking to help me directly or, or to give me money or to, you know credit card or whatever. Um, the way yeah, because the scam, what it did was it sent a text message. Yeah, it was a text so message. somebody must have hacked into the... We um, think. We're not sure how it happened. They got a hold of people's, people's phone, numbers. phone numbers from our directory. That's correct. Well, that's what we think. So, which all the passwords have been changed. Right, so, so we did change all the church's passwords. Asking for, it was asking for a credit card? Well, to buy a Visa card. For me to give to me to help somebody in need. In need, okay. So the way I would ask, and, and what I've done already here, because if you remember, we had a homeless couple last summer that we helped. And what I say is, you you give your money to the church, not to me. I never will ask money directly to give to me. So it comes through the church. You give it to the church. And you designate and the it the church will whatever. designate where that money goes to. And like you a, have a pastor's a, fund, right? Yeah, a pastor's discretionary fund okay. that we can use. Um, so that's the way that it works. Now, some people have here already, and then my other churches that I serve, I'll, I'll come into the, my office, and somebody have has like a grocery gift card put on my desk and, and with a little note saying, you know, to, if somebody comes in looking for groceries, then and that's, I mean, that's okay too to do it. Um, but I would never ask you to do that. But if, you know, so it, so basically the thing is, I won't. If somebody says they're me and they're asking to help me directly with either giving me money or a card or whatever, that's not from me. So just be careful of scams. And, and then I heard uh, from a member from their daughter's church. I in Mecklenburg in Charlotte, County. Yeah, somewhere in Charlotte area. They got the exact same scam. They got, it was their pastor name on a, a text asking for visa cards. Um, and even though the number was probably the same of the text, that's the person that sent that text, um, the police can't trace it. Yeah, right. So we, cause we did right. call the sheriff's office and yeah. So, and that was fine. I got a lot of phone calls, which was good that you called um, and or emailed me and said, you know, you got this and it doesn't seem right. So, And Walt uh, helped us with that. Yeah. So. Um, unfortunately, there was one member who, who, who fell for it. So I feel bad about that. Um, and they had to just cancel their credit card and get a new credit card because they gave the credit card number to, to whoever that was. It is. So it's terrible. And, and um, in fact, in the county stuff, no, I didn't bring that either. Oh yeah, I did. <clears throat> Hold on. There's two other things I wanted to tell you about. No, maybe not. But about the, during the pandemic, scams are on the rise. So just be watchful, just be careful. Don't ever give, you know, when somebody who is asking for your credit card, you know, they either they call you up or you get a text or an email, um, it's better not to do that. Don't information yeah so sorry that, that happened the source um, oh here it is yeah fraud alert COVID-19 scams so just just be careful <clears throat> about that does it list the scams no it doesn't oh, okay but there's a there's a place you can go online to check check it out so I'll give you that it's L S Carolinas 
dot net slash 2020 forward slash yeah forward slash 2020 um, the other thing that I, I got news on is um, about the COVID vaccine and a lot of and information of what you need to know um, if you so if you want to know about it instead of me giving you the, the website because it's crazy long um, you can call me and I can give you that um, information but it's um, Cindy Williams vice president and chief pharmacy officer Riverside Health Systems and Leslie Baker chief experience officer at a large physician group in New York a fact-filled hour of updates and best practices on the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccines so if you, if you want to know more about that you can either email me or call me or and I'll get you that link to you um, what else is happening I think that's well you said oh in your about, announcements about yeah about next week next week um, so look at your emails on Monday um, for more information about next Sunday services and if there'll be a sign-up sheet for services coming around and we'll be hopefully installing the council members and receiving new members next Sunday and you're receiving new members regardless yeah I think so I think they're if we don't if we're not in person they're willing to come to be recorded All right. So hopefully we'll see everybody next yeah, week. Yeah, hopefully we will. I know it's the numbers are going up. I looked again this morning. I just they just keep going up. Uh, but we'll get through this, and it's and the vaccine is here, so that's good news, and um, we'll get past this pandemic. All right. That's our hope. That's our prayer. Everybody, please stay safe, um, be well, and I'll talk to you soon. God bless. Bye bye. Bye.